you know, let's talk about Cuba a little bit here because protests uh, have broken out in Cuba recently over food, medicinal shortages, uh, and, you know, people have the right to critique their government. Um, you know, they have legitimate critiques. They can have legitimate critiques over the inefficiencies of the Cuban government's ability pro to provide, which have been exacerbated uh, by the pandemic uh, that crippled Cuba's economy because it relies a lot on tourism um, and that, you know, not every critique of a government that is on the left is uh, something that we're going to, you know, say is illegitimate, right? That's that's not what what we're talking about here. But in the United States, the conversation about the U.S.'s crippling sanctions that were reinstated by the Trump administration being a driving factor here is largely absent. It's not at least talked about enough at all. Um, and these sanctions have become more and more obviously immoral and cruel, and that includes sanctions on Iran and other countries amidst this global pandemic because sanctions hurt the citizenry. They are offset onto the people in that country and they're starved and they're lacking in medical supplies in many instances. Um, luckily, the Cuban government has a significant history of providing for its citizens, so it's not as bad as, say, in Iran. But the Biden administration has not reversed Trump's re reversal of, o of Obama's policy of ending much of those crippling sanctions. Jen Psaki was asked about uh, this yesterday. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. Um, and you and others designating Cuba. Secondly, on Cuba, what is the status of the review of the Trump era policy? Sure. So I would say, Steve, that um, and you and others who covered this uh, certainly know that um, uh, one, first, I will confirm, of course, we're still reviewing our Cuba policy with an eye toward its impact on the political and economic well-being of the Cuban people. The nature of the kinds of changes that were made by the previous administration, like redesignated, redesignating Cuba as a state sponsor of terror, carry significant statutory restrictions. Uh, we've been running a thorough policy process on these and other issues with support for democracy and human rights always at the core of our work. Now, there's no question that uh, the protests uh, over the weekend uh, and the events of the last several days are a significant event, significant events. And the, it was the largest protest we've seen in Cuba in a long time. That will obviously have an impact on how we proceed. So we will see how things develop in the days ahead and develop our policy responses accordingly. We don't want to do it as one-offs. We want to look at it as we have been in a, with a comprehensive approach in mind. Okay, so she says there that there are statutory restrictions, restrictions because the Trump administration, yes, designated Cuba as a state sponsor of terror, was asinine. So uh, here's the solution. Circumvent uh, those restrictions immediately. Immediately. And then she also says that support for democracy and human rights is always at the core of the United States' work. Laugh along with me. You know what's a violation of human rights? Prioritizing care about statutory restrictions over immediately ending a blockade of goods and sanctions that also influence other countries, by the way, that we uh, are allied with. Some of them go around it, but a lot of them are coward to the United States, given the power that we have in the world, understandably in some, in, I, I, I mean, not fully understandably, but you get what I'm saying. Um, and the democracy part. The design of sanctions is literally to starve the Cuban people into making a determination for their own country that is based on artificial pain and committed by the United States. So this is super indicative of, of the Biden administration's approach to foreign policy here. Whatever the foreign policy blob says goes, and we're not going to touch anything that forces us to take any position at all, except that the status quo is awesome. Even though his, pre his Democratic predecessor, Obama, found it important enough to kind of ease 
and reopen the relationship with Cuba. We don't want to take any position at all. So we're going to take a position, which is a position. When these people say uh, democracy, they mean capitalism. Like yeah. we're, we, we don't, we're not supporting Saudi Arabia because of democracy. It's because of capitalism. And there's one thing to say, which is that, like you said, up front and the embargo. It's, and I don't know, Brendan, if you have that um, image I just posted in uh, Slack, but when you look at how stark this is and how alone um, America is, I don't know if you can full screen the image maybe, um, but it's there's the U.S. and Israel um, that voted in favor of maintaining the uh, the embargo, and then Colombia, uh, Ukraine, and the United Arab Emirates uh, that abstained. Brazil, I think, also abstained. Is that is well? That, I'm not yeah. sure what's going on with those those uh, dark ones. The I just remember hearing they abstained. Yeah, yeah, maybe there's a different kind of abstention than the the uh, yellow Colombia, Ukraine, UAE one. But but I think the point is fairly clear. Right. When you look at this. It's, we're the bad guys. Those, they're not suffering under communism. They're suffering under U.S. Uh, just economic stranglehold. Right. And if the Iranian people, if uh, the Cuban people want to protest their own government where we're not creating situ situations that they have to protest and making it, you know, a, a much, much harder, then go ahead. That's their right to actual democracy as opposed to capitalism but said as democracy in this in this you know double speak way we're criminalizing protest here we have all these sorts of anti-road uh, protester bills where you can either run them down or arrest them for a long period of time um which obviously weren't uh in play uh with the pro uh or the anti-cuba protesters in miami recently those guys are fine because that's not who those laws are against those are um laws are meant to crack down the left only of course and by the way uh we were talking about this a little bit before the show. Uh, the Biden administration stacked its team with foreign policy consultants from this West exec consulting practice, which was you know, headed by Tony Blinken, the secretary of state. What are they consulting on? Because from everything we've seen, they're doing nothing on foreign policy. They just kind of want to go, no, 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 no. I don't hear anything. I don't want to deal with this. I want to maybe deal with infrastructure and I don't want to cause any scene in this area. And we've even seen it kind of in, in the way that they approach the border at the initial start of the administration. So um, the truth is, these things are better left not talked about. Like the, the U.S. has some dirty business that it likes to take care of and elaborating it um, publicly is not helpful for that. Exactly. And and Biden, as the empire politician, as Jeremy P Scahill puts it so well, um, not talking about it serves that very pr that project. So um, I think this is by design, unfortunately. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.